yes, Sumita Swatar Upanishad. It looks exactly as if letters are. So this is Sumita Swatar Upanishad. We are on the ninth mantra. Uh, that's on page 80. Nyatnyu Dvavaja Isha Anisha Aja Heka Bhokri Bhokya Tayukta Anantas Chatma Vishwarupo Yakata Trayam Yada Vindati Brahma Mesat. So, yeah, nya, nyo, uh, I'll read the first uh, the translation. They too, that is, God and the individual soul, are both birthless and respectively are all knowing and ignorant and almighty and powerless. Since the birthless one, namely Maya, is employed for bringing into being the enjoyer, the enjoyable and the enjoyment, the self is infinite since it has the universe as its appearance and hence it is not an agent. One becomes liberated when one knows the three as this Brahman. Now we have a, we have a little uh, metaphysics here, big metaphysics in the sense of uh, two are spoken of one is God the personal God and individual soul individual souls rather. both are called birthless Dwao Ajao that is both are birthless there is another uh, entity that has come in the picture. But it's a feminine gender of birthless, Aja, and that is Maya. Now, so we have three things which are birthless. Now, birthless in the sense of what happens is uh, we, we think that uh, what is the birthless? But in Indian metaphysics, uh, especially in Indian philosophy, um, the word Aja is translated as birthless, but uh, it's just to show it's uncreate. Mm -hmm. God is uncreate. The individual soul is uncreate. And this Maya that you're talking about, the thing which comes, this interplay between the both of them, God and the individual soul, that also is birthless, uncreate. So, because the moment you try to pin something like mine is a historical religion, oh, you are getting into big trouble. <laughs> so, we transcended this beginning of time and end of time and this creation business by saying this whole universe is a projection. It's an appearance. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Even if you say like it's vibrating, it's still like just an appearance. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, like empirically things. we can say, yeah, it's uh, something that's vibrating and all these things. But, but uh, that still means appearance? It's an appearance, yes. That's still, the vibrating oh, yeah. still means an Because like when you look at, uh, uh, while driving, you're looking at yeah. asphalt and, you know, it's hot and you see... Though that you can say the the road as if it's you know a kind of a you know, while oh, it's shaking way way it's nothing it's just heat so it's it appears like that due to whatever vibration the heat or whatever. now here we have God the individual souls and Maya that's the universe that appears as all uncreate and by implication which the 
mantra also refers brahman the supreme reality is also on screen so there we are now the question is we can understand this uncreated reality that's brahman the supreme reality we can understand a little of this maya also it is not something like you know as a illusory in the sense of it does not exist it exists in a way it produces all this diversity and from the highest standpoint it does not exist because it's not even perceived so they call it indefinable why you cannot define it as existent or non existent or you cannot say it's existent at one point of time and non existent at another point of time. you cannot say that that's a contradictory it's existent non existent so what is this so these three things are there the differentiation has been made by this uncreated maya okay now we have one order of reality called the brahman okay we have now one on the second level is the personal god okay now the personal god as i said is not a person with hands and feet with all hands and all feet and mm-hmm. all bodies and all brains and everything the sum total of all souls is the personal god ishwar yes that's ishwar mm. <laughs> then we have the individual souls the third order of reality now what has made all these you can say one reality split into one side is ishvara god and all these souls it's as i said it's that uncreated maya so appears split it's just appears appears split. exactly appears it appears split like the gold and the ornaments and all exactly exactly so you have gold and then it is converted into a kind of beautiful necklace and then you can rework that melt it again and produce bracelets or rings or earrings or whatever now the first half of the man- mantra talks about what exactly are the characteristics the jeeva now we have said jeeva and we have shiva we have the individual soul and we have god yeah. now we know god god cannot be a something small you know he has got to be big <laughs> it's not a size they 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 give it as the mantra says yeah that is all knowing one is all knowing and the other is less knowing yeah dwava and then both of them nya and nyo that they two that is god and individual soul are both birthless and respectively are all knowing and ignorant and mm. mm. well, less knowing ignorant is a, is a yeah. difficult yeah mm-hmm. one of those english words yeah maybe. which is yeah, which is so yeah, it's so, yeah. 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 so so <laughs> incorrect knowing. yeah and the other, what are the other characteristics almighty mm-hmm. god is almighty and <clears throat> this is with less might <laughs> much 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 less much less <laughs> so the word uses isha and anisha because of the sandhi you cannot uh, it doesn't matter 
Now that's the first, you can say, line in the manifest. Now the characteristics are given. This is, now even if you say the size, you know, the size, we are so small, yet there is something within us that makes us feel, no, I'm not small. Mm -hmm. uh, something. There's a higher dimension within us. We may feel small at times and feel crushed at times. And we look around, then we settle down into a kind of a mode. Say, What's the rubbish here? <laughs> I am too big for all these things. And uh, it's your inner dimension, that other reality, which is actually mm. knocking on you. You are not too small. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we are afraid of death. No, death. I cannot even uh, imagine myself dead. Yeah. Why? I'm beyond, because I'm beyond that. Mm -hmm. I'm immortal. And that's it. So it's not that these dimensions are completely hidden. They seep out of us into my consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, these two now, God and the individual soul, who has, who is responsible for it, there's actually, there's no, nobody takes a responsibility. <laughs> they're saying, what's, who's responsible? But from the philosophical point of view, you got to have a factor responsible for this. And what is that? That is the unborn, the third entity called Maya. It is there, it is not there. It will bring a picture in front of you, make you think about it and leave. And then it, you, will, you will now imagine this picture and that sound and this voice and this all is. It keeps the ball rolling and rolling and rolling. It's like you, know, uh, you go towards the horizon, uh, go towards the, you can say the sun, the setting sun. And the more you go towards the setting sun, the more horizon, the horizon, you know, it keeps, going, it keeps back. going back and back. You can never reach the horizon. And you keep on going in circles. Yeah, I do. <laughs> because you set about. in motion something and then, and that's what Maya would like you to do. So, Suppose it's dark and uh, somebody comes behind and just taps me on the shoulder. <laughs> the first thing I'll do is a kind of a start. <laughs> and that's what Maya wants you to do. That's what Rakha wants you to do. Fuck that, what he does to you. <laughs> and then it disappears. Whoever taps disappears and then you're left imagining. Okay. Imagining. Who's that? What is that? Maybe it was God. Maybe it's some ghost. Maybe it's some this. Or maybe it's a kind of a tree branch or something. Something like that. <laughs> you keep on, no? And while your heart is... So that Maya, how many Mayas are there? It's one. It's The second line of the mantra is one. It's one. It is of that one which makes the uncreate, this is also uncreate, that also uncreate Brahman, the first order of reality. It brings a kind of a differentiation. It makes the one into many. It does not actually make it, makes it one appear as many. Oh. So everything that is not the formless reality of Brahman is Maya. Yes. So that would include also thought, right? Yes, yes, Every yes. Ritual. Yes, yes, yes. Every name and form, hmm. anything connected with name and form is a product of Maya. And you, and you said that the result is really confusion. Yes. Without it attributing is. will to Maya. Yes. 
It results in confusion. confusion. The first confusion is, it makes that <coughs> soul think of itself as appearance of the body. And then we give a name, and then we give an education, we give a language, we give a religion, we give this and that, and there we are. <laughs> it makes the impossible possible. Okay, now what's impossible? The reality cannot be split into many. The moment you say the reality has been split into many, there you are finished, you are gone. Because it will not be a reality anymore. Reality is reality. Is, it is you know, not subject to the three periods of time. It is eternal, everlasting. And that's the reason why they say even heaven, for us, you know, heaven, it's non-eternal. Right? Because there's name and form. So you go to the highest heaven, where there's name and form, wherever there's name and form, it's an appearance. Now, there are some people who can see through that appearance and see that reality ah, through that name and form. Then what's wrong? Hey, there's no name and form. There's that reality I see. This is the idea. Now, who has brought this about? Where has it come? These questions are unanswerable. There is no question there and there is no answer. Also. So, what does that one Maya do? That's one. Now, that is the, you can say, the power of God and it's also your power because we also are, in a way, uh, small, yes, but uh, tiny, yes, <laughs> insignificant, yes, but we had, we are capable of doing a lot of things. You see this room? You see all this? Who's done it? It is we who have done it. So, we feel we are insignificant and yes, but don't, don't. Don't uh, don't be too sure about insignificance. You have uh, a lot of you can say power behind it. So the power is not your. I mean, trust me, it's not your. Mm. Right? It's universal power. It's not exactly. It's not a exactly. It's not a separate thing. See, the power of the universe is within you. Yeah. And that's the idea. The whole power of the universe is within you. And you exist as a result of the power of the universe. Exactly. You exist because of you've been made into a kind of separate entity because of that. Now show what's there in you. <laughs> but what it does is, is Bhoktri Bhogya Artha Yukta. It is uh, it's a continuation of the previous mantra. It is a, it splits. How does it make the one many? It splits them into three things. Three, you can say broad division. The first division is the experience. Okay. Then we have the experience. And then the object of experience. So we have this. This is the triad which is constantly being used in the Vedanta. The knower, knowledge and the known. Hmm? Or the meditator and meditation, and the object of meditation. Or the witness, Sakshi, no? Yes. Sakshi is, a, Sakshi is a little behind. Behind. It does not experience. It just watches. It just experience. watches. It just watches. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it comes from that word Sakshi. So, with Akshi eyes, it just keeps oh, on. Yeah, yeah. It just watches. It doesn't get involved in this 
triad, this play, interplay of the experience, uh, the experience and the thing experience. And Sakshi is the power of Brahman. Or it is one with Brahman. It, it is one with Brahman. It is one with it's not a power, it's there, it, it, it's reality, it's that. Oh. Okay. So if it's our Shakshi, we can just call it Brahma? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this universe here now is uh, here spread out all before us. And how does this, it starts with us, we can say, you know, trickle. You know, just a few drops and slowly, slowly, slowly become the trickle and then the trickle keeps on increasing and becomes a kind of a big stream and river and then so on and so on. This is projection. We are held under this, you can say, spell. This maya is a kind of a spell. It has come between me and you. You know, Sri Ramakrishna used to say, uh, God is the closest to you. It is even closer than your own self. It is yourself there inside. And uh, externally used to give an uh, example. You should actually demonstrate. Saying, see, we are so close. And then you should put a piece of cloth between us. See, we are so close, yet we cannot see each other. Mm -hmm. So this is actually how a kind of a screen comes in. And it's like a kind of a screen. It so when you say, who is our self? We say, this is myself. No, that is an error. Maya wants you to say that. Mm -hmm. She'll run away when you start saying that self in me is that supreme self, that God. Okay. Um, that is even further on. Is it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> First you take that the the Ishvara, Ishvara, the the impersonal God, the God where all the personalities are embedded in. That's a personal God, I think. First we go and then say there are the in, that personal God as Ishvara there. Your soul inside, individual soul within your soul is that personal God, Ishvara. And behind that Ishvara is what? Brahman. Ishvara is supposed to be the first manifestation of Brahman. Yes. There we have. Mm -hmm. I have I've Hadrita. studied it here and that's why I'm picking up all these yeah. things. Yeah. Devadatta society. <laughs> yeah. 60 years you've been 55. studying. 50 years. 55. 55. Then. Well, you said something about we can't imagine death, the reason we can't mm. imagine death, mm -hmm. which I guess is common to everyone. Everyone. It's because we have that. Yes, that immortal Brahman. aspect of our mm -hmm. can being. Yes, yes, yes. So that's it? Or is yes, it just that's we it. have a hard time imagining our own No, 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 no. So it's, it's, uh, it's not a kind of a kind of a suppression. Uh, you know, you know, the psychologically uh, thing yeah. is suppressed, and uh, we try to bring out the opposite. You can say, no, no, I'm not going to die. So it actually is that immortal part of your being that knows mm -hmm. it has not been created for it to die. That's the idea. Okay. I've I've been created. The bodies have been created in time and space, and it will arrive at dissolution. But I am not going to die. I am that immortal one. So in times of great stress and great times of great calmness also, where you, your mind becomes absolutely calm, those thoughts of your reality emerge. Saying the whole universe like a drop in, in my nature. What's that? So this is how slowly we approach our divine nature. So what happens is we 
set up in motion the experience. And you know what happens is we don't want to have just one thing to experience. And we like this and this and this and this there. We have multiple experiences. And one experience will lead you to the next and the next and the next. The idea is <clears throat> so the objection uh, by some of these uh, philosophers is if there is one reality that appears as God and individual story. Okay. Now God knows his nature. Why? He also should have been bound like us. Yes, in a way, he is bound, but he is his, his power. That's his power. Maya is his power. He is under his control. And we are being controlled by that power. That's that's a difference. Now suppose we have innumerable individual souls. Okay. Now when this word two are spoken of, now you immediately, hey, that's duality. In a way, you have individual souls, all these numerous individual souls here. And the collective is called God. You got it? It is not this is, this is separate and that is separate. Huh? Otherwise, you will get duality. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same thing as Hiranyagarbha, Hiranyagarbha. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's Hiranyagarbha. Yeah. <laughs> the golden womb. The, I, there, there are some philosophers who say, now, suppose one soul wants to meditate. It's had enough of experience of all this. Then I want to go back home. I want to go back to my reality. I want to know who or what I am. So that person keeps on meditating and that person actualizes that reality. Now, his actualization or her actualization Will it free that person or everyone else? <laughs> that is, that. yeah. If one soul becomes free, everybody should get free. Saying no, it doesn't happen like that. Kind of a no and no. Yes, it 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 sends an impulse to other souls. But that is a. But within their perception, mm. everybody's everyone always is free. free. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know how to explain it, but you know what I mean. Mm. Right. <laughs> you know what happens is at times Vivekananda used to lecture and he used to lift the minds of the audience to a high level. And for a moment they had a glimpse of that reality. And uh, all time, all space, everything was there. Just his voice, you know, ringing. And, and when he used to stop lecturing, it was like, uh, they never <laughs> slammed down, but it was a gradual, it's like, a, they came down slowly down to earth. and oh. Because there is a kind of a, there is a kind of an intoxicating effect of that knowledge. As a mind descends down, you still are in that kind of mood, you know. <laughs> now, but when these people came down, they were <laughs> they were there like ordinary people. Oh, I've got to go to school. I've got to go to my office. I've got a fence to mend, and I've got to to cook. Just now you are thinking you are so angelic <laughs> <laughs> that that the heavens are open and then the sky, the that uh, light pouring in, and then uh, suddenly I've got to cook and <laughs> why bother? 
<laughs> That's it. This is what is called Maya. We don't want to give up that individuality. So if one soul becomes free, the others don't become free because they've got many things to do. <laughs> they have different uh, it can say limiting adjuncts, as they say. No, we were saying last time we discussed about this uh, upadis, uh, different upadis, and uh, I have this upadi and that upadi. It's kind of a, a superimposition. They're not real, but they limit you. Like samskara. Yeah, from that initial uh, in superimposition, then we have the samskaras, correct? And then we have different uh, types of samskaras all playing together. And so you say, oh, that's a that's a liberated soul. Oh, please, please liberate me. Uh, liberate you? Yes, come. Uh, can I come tomorrow? I've got a few loose ends to tie up. There you are. So it's like that, uh, you know. Um, I think there was uh, Christ, you know, uh, uh, yeah, a rich young man saying, "How how do you attain the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven? Mm -hmm. Sell all that you have yeah. and come and follow me." But he had a lot, a lot. <laughs> and he left. They say that progeny cannot liberate you, liberate the parent, mm. the progeny. Is that true? Like, in other words, the children, they can, the person himself has to go, have that experience of liberation. And yet they are saying, the liberated person can liberate, can liberate seven generations mm. above and below. Yeah. It's called Kulam Pavitram Janani Kritartha. It's like, no, your whole, you can say, lineage becomes hallowed. Mm. And your mother attains the highest. Mm. Now, hallowed means it's not it's not just an ordinary thing. You know? uh, in that lineage was this nor of Brahman born. So it's a you know it's a very hallowed thing. Even today, the descendants of Ram Krishna, we respect them. Why? Because he was born in that. So his descendants means his his brother's side. They're still there. And mothers, uh, you can say, uh, from the nephews and numerous nephews and nieces that she had. Uh, they may be whatever they are, but they are respected. And uh, if you see those who were there during that time, they they were part of that play, you know, God's play. So you talking about the devotees? Mm. Not only the monastic, the devotees. Yes. And what says, devotees. Yes. Which I'm reading, I'm reading a book on it. Uh, God lives with them. Mm. Is that it? Is that what mm. it is? Yes. God is love and yes, God they lives, live with live God. God. They live with God. God yeah. lives with them. Yeah. So, so to get back. So, there will not be just, uh, there are many experiences. It The one reality fragments it to many. So, each one is a kind of an individual. But behind those individuals is that one reality. Okay? That, that's okay. Clear. And the collective of that, all the individuals, is called God. So God, obviously, suppose uh, I say, uh, I want to lift this table. So you lift this table up. Uh, then you say, let's, uh, let's help uh, the Swami. And then we all lift this table up. So, hey, if you did that, how did you do it? Suppose I say, I did it myself. <laughs> then there is something wrong. So, oh, everyone helped him. So, if you look at God as that the collective, which we do not acknowledge, yeah. he has been, in, like in the previous summary, he is, he, he is the one who nourishes the universe of all the experiencer and the experienced and he makes possible the experience. It is he who is the all-pervading reality. But the individual, uh, no, I lifted this table and took it out. <laughs> and then somebody scolds me. I said, 
Who told you to take this table out in the in the rain? Then I say it wasn't me. It was all. <laughs> all of them. Then, it's not my fault. It's God's fault. You know, we try to yeah. you know, when the, something good, I'll take care. Yes, right. And then see, it's God's fault. See all this, all the trouble in this universe. It's all God's fault. There, he has started this mess. Let him handle it. It's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> so is it? And uh, so, like I said, there are these four entities, all birthless. Actually, the one entity is appearing as many. So this <clears throat> year we are on. We will take this page number. Uh, 81. So, also, uh, Ishwara can be seen as a creator, creator, sustainer, and destroyer. destroyer. Yes. Ishwara. Yes. And he's yes. also the god of monotheism, monotheistic religion. Monotheistic religion. Only in uh, in uh, uh, Indian philosophy. There is no such thing as creator. We call it creator, but it's a projection. Projection. It's a projection. Yes. yes. In, in Vedanta. Yes. In Vedanta. In Vedanta. Which Ramakrishna once he was uh, complained to the divine. My body is cancer. And these boys are saying, if I cure it, I like to eat something. Mm -hmm. Because you've not been able to eat properly. And then the Divine Mother said, why? You are eating through all these months. Mm -hmm. There you are. You kept quiet. So at that one level of experience uh, you have, uh, you are just experiencing your body now. And then you will be able to experience two bodies, side bodies, ten of them. Oh, it's a whole thing. But only Ramakrishna is the can be experience all that. No, no, you also can do it. Once you realize your own. Self. Yes, you also can do it. Well, yeah. Because you are not insignificant. Okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so the second uh, para, please. The two, God and the individual soul, individual souls are all-knowing and ignorant. Not only is it that the Lord nourishes the manifested and the unmanifested and that the powerless soul comes under bondage, but the two, the all-knowing and the ignorant, uh, the non-knowing, <laughs> the all-knowing one being God and the non-knowing one, the soul. So this is there are also birthless. So, both are without birth. You know, when Arjuna, I think from tomorrow we are going to start this Bhagavad Gita. Oh, tomorrow. So, yeah, first thing is, uh, he say, this soul does not undergo birth nor does anything arise from this birth. He first cuts this idea of birth and death in our minds also. Suppose you say, you catch somebody saying, you know you have never been born and you will never die. What is this guy talking about? <laughs> something wrong with him. <laughs> and at the same time, we are the ones who are seeking God. So how how will we seek God? Uh, you know, it is somewhere in that northeastern direction. There is a kind of a place called uh, what heaven there. Don't go to that eastern heaven. That's a wrong heaven. You go to the north northeastern heaven. That's a that's a better place. No, Vedanta will say. That person will say, no, don't go there. Don't, don't go here. So where do I go to find God? It is there within you. 
Really? It's here within me? Yes, it's here within you. So I don't need to go anywhere out? No. Do I need to do all these spiritual practices? If you cannot catch the, you can say, the idea immediately. Oh, there it is. <laughs> then you will have to undertake spiritual for you to go to to break your old mistakes your errors not mistake errors in i'm looking at this i should have been looking somewhere inside the moment i change my perception i realize oh that so inside me like the analogy is given like there are two birds or like light and shadow so the individual soul is like that lower bird and there's a higher bird or there's a kind of a shadow throne on my mind. I identify myself with that shadow. So there was one Swami, he was a great Swami. On his itinerant days, he was walking. And you know, you need to go to some house or village and all to for your daily daily bread. We don't say, give us today our daily bread. <laughs> so, uh, he seen a young mother trying to console as well as trying to calm a child who's running about trying to catch his shadow. <laughs> and the, the more he's running towards the shadow, the more the shadow running towards him. So she is trying to explain, you don't have to run me, come here. So he watches that interaction for a while and he, then he calls that child, come, you want to catch that? He says, yeah. come here, stand here with me. Okay, the child also is not happy, he wants to play something. You see that shadow there of yours? He's saying, yes. You want to catch that, isn't it? You see my shadow also? Yeah. yeah. Even I want to catch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's both catch mm -hmm. our shadow. So how do you do it? Say, wait, wait, don't run. You see? He holds it like, put, put your hand on the head like this. Mm -hmm. and the child also does it like that. You see? You've caught your shadow. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> and the child is ecstatic. <laughs> I've caught my shadow. I've caught. He never caught his shadow. He just was <laughs> something like this. And so, you're going to search for God. You're going for this. You're going for that. Wait, wait, wait. Don't run about here and there. That is within you. And the moment you say, look, it was here. Here you have been hiding all along. Yeah, I've been hiding. I've not been hiding. I've been Gradually revealing myself and knocking on your mm. thick skull <laughs> now and then, saying, Here I am, why don't you acknowledge me? And you've been running behind shadows. So it's a kind of a you go inside. And all the Upanishads are just trying to, all these things are nothing but trying to change your perception, line of mm -hmm. perception. Mm -hmm. Don't dare. Don't go there. Don't look there. You have nothing there. Turn around. Turn around and see that glory of that self. So there you will find God. And God is there is all-knowing that personal God. And behind that personal God also you will find that Brahman. That Brahman is the underlying reality. There you are. This, 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 this. And this Maya, which has made all the differentiation, she'll run away. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna gives an example. Is saying, there's one girl, she's, she's, you know, uh, there was a boy, he's frightening his little sister. He's put on a mask of a tiger. And he goes to his sister and she says, scream. And then, then she's, after screaming, says, Oh, oh, you are Hari. And then Hari goes away. 
he he also smiled because he has been recognized the moment you recognize maya of what it is it is not even the reality that i have i am more real than this maya i am solid you don't you appear and you know we are uh, driving down to santa barbara and saying in this time of the year it's all misty it looks all different night time it looks all different it's the same thing but a little mist has come and you get a total different picture of things so something has come this maya comes and distorts everything and we see things as differently so this is what i want to emphasize in, in today because the rest of the mantra will take it later but uh, everything is uncreate the supreme reality called brahman is uncreate it is there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever again there is never an end and there is one unborn maya which appears which sorry which projects all these things this is the world of appearance and as it keeps on working what it does is it differentiates between two classes two orders of reality one is the god and one is the individual souls it makes as if they are separate that which was not separate that which was not different it brings differentiation okay there is one order of reality and something comes and that reality appears as god as well as individual souls which is nothing but the experiencer the experience and the thing experience the object of experience and we are caught in this web and we keep on running about yes mm-hmm. uh, how is my unborn is it because time is born in my yes time uh, time emerges after maya starts working so when maya is not vibrating is it maya just brahman yes in a way it is not brahman it is the power of brahman then wouldn't that be a second no it uh, that's why i'm saying yes that's what it's right it is neither real nor unreal not a mixture of both otherwise you will again have two infinities you have one brahman the infinite reality and if you posit another one which is called maya and call this also real then you will have two reals which is you can say uh, disgusting to a vedantin <laughs> two Dual. 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 Ah, no 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 please <laughs> just remove one out and you have <laughs> one the one reality and uh, this is what happens you this is neither exist nor not so uh, from the theistic standpoint or you can say from from the ordinary standpoint you say like you are here somewhere deep down you know you exist why do you sit down and you feel i exist at the same time i have certain capabilities i have certain powers it is not just plain existence not plain being mm-hmm. there is something called the being and the becoming mm-hmm. somebody call come and say you are an incompu <laughs> i go home and quietly and then i try to throw off that you can say word out of my head i try to cut it i am not in compu you see i've got all these degrees here <laughs> so many people say that there's no one so much learned than you <laughs> and here i'm a successful person i'm not in compu 
and you just you are aware of your powers. There are certain sudden come and hits you. You have certain capabilities. It's not just plain. I am just being. Just being. Yeah. That being being is associated with becoming. Mm -hmm. That being appears as a flow, as dynamism. This is the power of mind. But the the thing is knowing that that flowing is only is really only being. Mm. Then you yes 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 yes. That's what happens when when suddenly the veil has been removed off, and you think the being and the becoming are non-different. And you see this whole universe not as an appearance but as that reality, and then you become ecstatic. That means that the becoming is is Maya. Mm. The becoming. Yes. No, becoming is. Yes. Being. I have a poem. The being is translated into the becoming, and then it's. Because becoming grammatically is time. Yes. Being yes. Is yes. Present, yes. Yes. Time is an apparent. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, uh, if you ask a person to just sit down quietly, don't do anything. Just sit down quietly. After two minutes, I've sat up for two minutes quietly. <laughs> now what? <laughs> uh, go fetch me a glass of water, please. Oh, yes, I can do that. Here you go. And, and now what? You sit down for five minutes quietly. Now what? There is that person as he feels that uh, he or she has to do something. Mm. We were in that state of pure being and we have been drawn down from that and now we want to do something. Mm. This is that experience. Experience. I want to experience. I want to this. Mm. And uh, what happens is we keep on, like I said, we set the ball rolling and we are caught in that. At one time, you suddenly say, enough. Enough. And then what happens? Everything drops for you. Then I say, what happened to that appearance? Like in the Vivek Chudamani also, you have said, huh? saying, where is this world? I was just experiencing it now. Where has it merged? Kvagatam, Kenavanitam, Kutra Leenam Idam Jani. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Much. I just now, I was just looking at it. Adunai Maya Drashta. I was just looking at it. It's Maha Adbutam. It's a great wonder. And Maya is called that great wonder. Oh, she creates this thing. It's a wonderful thing. She herself is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. It comes in a flash, according to Swami Sahananda. This realization of this stuff comes in a flash. It does not necessarily come in a flash, it but some people, it comes gradually. More and more. Basically. Yes, yes. And in fact, a lot of people undergo this slow enlightenment. Mm -hmm. It's gradual. Every day we are being, in a way, enlightened. We leave our previous illusions and we proceed slowly, slowly. And then after a while you say, oh my God, oh, I've traveled so far down the road. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it. One fine day you'll realize, oh, oh I will, this is the reality. And when did it happen? It happened gradually. Yeah, but that end point, you might say, when that whole thing simply drops, you might say, oh, it come, has come as a flash. Mm -hmm. So rather, I would say, uh, that's a, it's in this age of, we can say, uh, Vedanta being preached, somewhere deep down, we are going towards enlightenment. We are being Carried. So, 
what is it what's that power now maya not only deludes us but also leads us to that you know she helps us she helps us no no not there come this side no no not there no, you had enough of that no come this side <laughs> her work is to lead us back that's why she's called the maha maya great the great power the power the enchantress so it is she makes this appearance appear and then she withdraws it for you see you see this come you're crying all the while for me here i am he appears so she also and that's when uh, certain you can say schools of you can say like like shaiva or shakta or anything shri ram krishna also says she has to be propitiated she has to be prayed for it's in her hands that the key to the knowledge of brahman is held it's only when she says you know mm. that's enough so you say that and when a person has given up everything she is saying i have given up this i have given up that i have given up this maya will bring us cat and say here it is <laughs> you'll get attached to the cat <laughs> is it yes. just to extinguish your last attachment like if you no you are not yet ready if you just see the cat look the cat has come yeah it is it is another soul it is another soul and nobody really is dependent on any one else but we feel this thing depends on me i have to look after it there would you say swami ji the mahamaya is the holy mother oh yes yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. that's that's the shakti that's the universal life so maya in vedanta is a kind of a neutral you can say power of brahman and uh, <coughs> but in the in the theistic you can say vedanta we say they have given it a kind of a name and a form everyone has got a name and form why not maya maya itself so she is either durga or kali or saraswati or lakshmi or this and that and that and in this age that maha maya has taken a special form and has appeared as the holy mother this is you know uh, understanding this is you no know, divine power yeah uh, she now has the key to the knowledge of brahma holy mother i read that in the gospel yeah yeah mm-hmm. even she your holy the mother yeah the holy mother you know direct disciples of shri ramakrishna also you know, don't you know who she is mm-hmm. so that power who has brought out this world appearance she has appeared now in our midst mm-hmm. so you've looking for me <laughs> oh yes we've been looking for you where were you all this year mm-hmm. what do you want i want liberation <laughs> so there was one uh, devotee he used to go to mother's house in calcutta you know would go them very frequently and he was very free the monks used to hesitate and monks and other devotees but uh, he was quite so the monks they caught him they they used to, they had gone together to bathe in the river and they say saying you are very free with mother no in the sense that you can enter in that room which uh, we cannot even go in without permission you ask some ask can you ask something of mother ask him what do i ask of her ask liberation oh very easy and he <laughs> goes in mother's room enters as he enters mother is sitting for worship she looks at him and he not a word mm-hmm. come out of that dumb struck 
she looks at him what do you want he should have said liberation <laughs> but he said prasad <laughs> <laughs> so mother <laughs> because it is time yeah <laughs> i guess whatever but uh, there could have actual liberation but who wants liberation ah, that's what i was just like to say <laughs> and that's why we need to condition ourselves gradually we rise to one level condition ourselves rise to one level and the tantras and all these in yoga sir they talk about the different levels of the mind at a different chakras in the body are the different levels of the mind and uh, even once you come here there's a danger of going down it's only after coming here the most it can go is down here right? sometimes here yeah. then you are safe mm-hmm. so there are various levels of the as you keep on going higher and higher and higher your perception of this reality it will be different this reality this appearance will be different and then it will be finally come down when you come down here you see as if shri krishna says you can see that reality but it's like you know there's a glass barrier you kind of you cannot touch it you can see it you cannot touch it and then when it comes here you and that reality become one you were never separate then suddenly are i am that oh i am that huge infinite reality then it falls for you i will pour for 